Welcome to part two. We're going to start off with easy jobs. So easy jobs. Think of them as car radio presets. So we have two preset possibilities on a Transsteel 2200. Two. So on one, what we're going to do is we're going to save this to 275 inches a minute. So you push and hold down one for five seconds till it says PRG. And then on preset or easy job number two, we're going to set it to 100 inches per minute so we can have a hot and cold setting. So push and hold down two for five seconds until it says PRG or you see the green light. Now on one, we got 275. So this is 106.1. And then on two, we got 100. And this is 92.5, the edge. So one and two. To show you the flexibility of easy jobs, we're going to store a different wire type and diameter under easy job number one with metal core 045 at 150 inches per minute. So push and hold down one till it says PRG or you see the green light. Now we just overridden what was on one and with metal core 045. If we hit two, we're back to steel 030, hit one, metal core 150 inches a minute, two steel let's just say you want to delete an easy job all you got to do is push and hold down one for about 10 seconds till it says clear clr and then you see dashes so you completely deleted easy job number one then hold down two until it says clear or dashes and you completely deleted two out of the machine so you got one and two one and two how do we get out of here okay i think you hit synergic yes Let's do another easy job exercise, and we're set up for Synergic, two-step, steel, 030, 7525. Hold down one until we get program at 100 inches per minute. Then let's bump our wire feed speed up. Uh, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, let's do 250 again. Hold down two until it says PRG or you see green. We see green, so it's programmed. Now let's lock the machine out. Push and hold down this left gray button. Hit the top right cursor till it says close. Now we lock the whole front panel out. So if somebody wanted to screw around with your machine, like change wire type, diameter, gas, they can't do it. It says close. You can't even change the process, the trigger, or you can't even adjust the wire feed speed. But you can toggle between easy job one and two for different heat settings, hot and cold or cold and hot. Pretty cool. It works. Even voltage can't even change anything. So let's get out of uh, a locked faceplate. So push and hold down this bottom gray button, hit the top right cursor until it says open. And now it open up the whole faceplate so I can toggle between wire type, diameter, and gas, change all my settings if I want. But let's do another uh, cool thing with locking out the faceplate. Let's say you have a machine and all you want to do is weld aluminum with it. We'll set it up for ALSI, 045, 100% argon. Hold down the gray button, hit the top right, Lock it out, leave the machine, and guess what? You're not welding anything besides aluminum, sir. You're not even adjusting the wire feed speed. Who's ready for the first setup menu? <laughs> to get in the first setup menu, you push and hold down the left gray button with your left finger. Then you push and hit the right gray button and then let go. The first thing you'll see is gas preflow or GPR. You can go from 0 to 9.9 .9 seconds. Now to toggle between these parameters, you can use the left knob or you can use the bottom left and gray button to go left or right or to the next settings. But GPO is gas post flow. You can go from 0 to 9.9 .9 seconds. Then you have your slope. Slope is when you're in special four step for the trigger. This is how long it takes to go from your hot start to your main to your end crater. IS is your hot start current, so aluminum, usually you want it hotter at the beginning, so you could set it to 135, 35% hotter at the start. 100 is just like the main setting on the faceplate. End current, so this would be like a crater fill. So if you're on a special four step, if you want it colder to fill the crater, you could set this at 80, but 100 is just like on the faceplate. Feeder inch is wire jog, so when you hit that wire jog button on the front panel or pull the trigger... This is how fast the wire comes out. Burn back correction, it's always set to auto as factory setting, but you can set the amount of time 
that the wire burns back to the tip, but auto works just fine. So you don't really need to adjust this. Ignition timeout is a really cool feature. So you set the amount of wire that comes out in inch. And if it doesn't sense the arc, it'll do a no ignition on the faceplate. So let's say you throw your lead out and it hit the trigger and then you go to launch. What happens? You come back with wire there. This throws an error and locks the machine out. Factory reset. So if you get lost, you can factory reset by pushing and hold down the bottom gray button and hit the top right button until it says program. Now it's done a factory reset. Let's get into the second setup menu. And to get in the second setup menu, you're going to be on second, push and hold down the left gray button, hit the far right gray button, let go. The first selection you see is SET. So you can change this from US, which is inch, or to standard. Standard is metric. So on standard, wire feed speed is in meters per minute. And if you hit that top left cursor key, you can go do material thickness, and this is in millimeters. So if you like metric, millimeters, or meters, you can do that. If you like inch, just go to US. Next up is resistance. So to do a resistance check, you always want to do this before you start welding. So you take the gas nozzle off, roll the wire back, or if you don't want to roll it back, you just clip it with some welpers flush. And the importance of resistance is uh, it does a pre-check. So you take your ground and you take your contact tip, and this determines the resistance and the inductance in the circuit and adjusts the machine accordingly. So pull the trigger, and if you get an EPG, that means you're not getting good grounding. So to clear this air, you push the button to go back to R. So grind your mill scale off or take your tip and rub it against your work then pull the trigger and you're going to want to do about three pulls till you see about three of the same readings. So I see eight. Now the machine has determined the resistance or the inductance. Now I want to show you something. Let's say we take the ground out of the circuit and pull the trigger right on the, the dins. Watch how low the resistance drops. So I'm going to do it three times. It dropped a four. So you can see just without the ground, it dropped a four. So now I'm going to hook up long leads to show you what the resistance does. So let's pull the trigger three times, it's 10. So just based on your ground circuit, there is a big difference. Why is resistance check so important, you ask? Well, what happens if you put a 50 foot ground cable on? Or what happens if you put a 25 foot MIG lead on? What happens if it was wearing out? Or what happens if you're grounding at one end of the fixture and you're welding 30 feet away? Well, with resistance in real time, it determines the inductance, the resistance between the whole circuit, that's the machine, the lead, and the ground, and raises or lowers those values. So when you're welding, it's always the true parameters. L is for inductance. It follows resistance, so it automatically calculates itself. ENE is for true energy. So when you turn this on and you hit that cursor all the way over to the right, you see KJ. That stands for kilojoules. So if you're looking to calculate the total heat input in that part for that weldment, well, the option's there with the Strand Steel 2200. Fuse, you're telling the machine what size breaker you're running, so you can't exceed the amperage output for that breaker size. A lot of times machines trip. This won't trip if you put in the right breaker. ALC, I always turn this on on my Strand Steel 2200, and what this does... It allows you to adjust voltage independently of wire feed speed in synergic mode. So I'm going to turn my volts up. You notice that my wire feed speed will stay the same. And if I turn my volts down, my wire feed speed stays the same. This is the only way to go with synergic. Turn ALC on. It'll save you a bunch of time so you're not sitting there fighting volts, changing wire feed speed, and so on. Uh, the next one is SET. And we're back to the beginning. So push and hold down the left, hit the right, push it again, 